Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be the 45-year-old version. This actually has nothing to do with the movie. I think there was, what, 40-year-old version or something like that. This is actually a guy who wrote in an email, and he's been very super religious his whole life. No sex before marriage. You should only date members who also share the same kind of religion but in the last year or so he became involved with a woman and he finally got his cherry popped however there's some interesting things going on this particular woman had been in a 20-year marriage that she supposedly was very unhappy being in and was going to leave her husband and so obviously after a period of time this guy lost his virginity he's hooking up with her and yet she didn't leave her husband who she was supposedly unhappy being with so you can imagine obviously he's gotten back into his religion and create a lot of problems he's scratching his head he's thinking i don't understand why she's not happy she doesn't leave her husband i'm a great guy what the hell is going on and so what's interesting is this particular topic i mean obviously I don't, it's not every day that i get emails from people that don't lose their virginity in their 40s. It's a pretty rare thing, obviously, in this day and age. But he brings up some interesting points because I see this situation a lot in phone sessions that I do with guys is that they get involved with somebody that's married or in transition and they never actually seem to leave the person they say they're supposedly unhappy with. So he brings up some good things in here. Now, obviously, you can imagine you get to be your mid 40s, you're thinking, I haven't got married. This guy's never had a girlfriend, never lost his virginity. That's going to fuck with your confidence a little bit. So, you can imagine you got to a point, he's just like, I got to do something about this. And so he did. Obviously, you can tell he's regretting a little bit. But I got a small quote that I wrote on this particular topic, and then we're going to go through his email. And the quote says, most people have many parts of their personal and professional lives that they are not happy with. However, they are not miserable enough to do anything to change their situation or alter their life trajectory in any meaningful way. The average person tends to major in minor things and never comes close to reaching their full potential. Our time is limited on this earth and we all must decide what we are willing to go to our graves having not achieved or experienced. Choose wisely. And I got to say this is something as as I've gotten older, your perspective on life and living kind of changes a little bit. I'm going to be 50 come January of this year and I definitely look at things differently. I look at what I still want to accomplish in the future what i want to do but what's interesting for me personally as i've gotten older it's really become important to me to focus on enjoying my life and spending my time with people that i care about and obviously who feel the same way because when you're younger you're not really thinking about these things and you get to be my age it's you know i've lost a lot of people along the way friends family members and it continues to happen and those are the kinds of things that make you recognize that you know when we're busy in our everyday lives at the end of the day the time you got left is just shrinking every day it's zipping by so the question is how are you going to spend your time what are you going to do with your life where what are you going to be okay with having not done when you're on your deathbed and so obviously a guy in this in his situation he's now 46 but obviously you can imagine that shit's going to weigh on you because the worst thing is to get to the end of your life and recognize that you didn't do anything. You didn't go after anything that you really wanted. And all you got is a bunch of regrets. Because when you're out of time, when your time's up, it's fucking up. So with that said, let's go through his email. He says, hi, Corey. I'm a 46-year-old English guy. I was brought up in a strict JW, I assume he means Jehovah's Witness, religious family. I've had lots of problems and never really fit in in either the religion or out of it. I've sort of been on the fence my whole life. In other words, that tells me that you probably weren't really sure that you believed in what you were taught, but you had, I mean, if your whole family's involved, there's probably a lot of peer pressure 
to make the same choices that everybody. And that's that's an interesting thing about life. No matter where you are, who you work with, who your friends are, who your family members are, every single person that you're around wants to feel good about the decisions that they have made in their own lives. In order to feel good about those decisions, we want to project that influence on everybody around us because if we see the people around us making the same decisions that we do, then we feel better about the choices that we've made. And, you know, the old saying, misery loves company. So you'll be very careful who you're spending your time with, especially when you start doing things outside of your comfort zone. I mean, you can imagine this particular situation. This guy's got involved with a married woman and yet he's supposed to have no sex until marriage, no fornicating, no adultery, anything like that. But at the end of the day, this is somebody else's belief system that he adopted. And if you look at his actions, it doesn't seem like he had really jives with it. He seems to be kind of going along with things to please people and make everybody else happy. But you know, as we go through this email, the question is, is he really making himself happy by trying to live his life according to other people's unreasonable expectations? As for relationships, there have been none due to my religious upbringing with regular girls and none of the religion due to me not being a fully baptized me- member. We tend to try and date within the religion. I'm also nothing special in myself. I've had bad anxiety and depression my whole life. Some catch, huh? At the end of the day, every day you wake up, it's like you got to etch a sketch. You just shake it. I mean, every day the slate is wiped clean for us. doesn't matter. You could have been a slacker your whole life up until five minutes ago. The only thing that matters is what you continue to do now going forward. You could have been busting ass for the last 12 months and then from this moment forward decide you're going to be lazy. And for the next six or 12 months, you don't really do anything to help yourself. The only thing that really matters is what you're doing right now and how you're showing up today. Because it requires constant effort. To get from where you are to where you want to be requires constant effort. And you got to have heart. You got to have passion. If you're not excited about what you're doing or what you're trying to achieve, as soon as you hit the first obstacle, you just quit and you give up. So he says, a few years ago, I had just about quit life as I had my whole unhappiness wrapped up in being with a woman. I felt less as a man. I mean, honestly, you get to be 45. I mean, that's kind of understandable. You're 45 years old. Probably a lot of your friends have gotten married, had girlfriends around you, and and you got a big fucking donut. He says, unwanted, the professional wallflower. And then a woman came into my life. Now, remember, we're all driven by our emotions, and we use logic and reason to justify our decisions. Then a woman came into my life, a sister-in-law of a best mate. She is three years older and separated but not divorced from a 20-year marriage. We hit off as we had been admirers from afar for many years. Things slowly progressed over some months until we sealed the deal. Well, congratulations, dude. I bet you felt a hell of a lot better after that. With the happy finish, pun intended. You can imagine how nerve-wracking that was for a 45-year-old virgin. Same thing with a a 20-year-old virgin. It's, you know, first time you have sex, you're going to feel nervous about it. That's understandable. It went okay. I was was learning relationship stuff every day. I'm still naive to many things, but I've just ordered your book, so I'm hoping that I can learn. I got people in their 60s and 70s that write me. Just got out of a relationship. Maybe they were a widow or whatever. And the last time they dated, they were fucking teenagers. So you can imagine how nerve-wracking it is for them to get started all over. They're not looking going, gee, I'm 70 years old. My life's over. They're going, what can I do next? What can I create next? you got to have a compelling reason to get up every day and do what you do. He says, we were never together fully due to our home situations, but we snatched weekends here and there. I was pretty blissfully happily happy, and she was too. I felt as if I could achieve anything after a lifetime of apathy. Well, I talk about this in my first book, 3% Man, about how when you get a woman, especially when it knocks your socks off and you're happy and you're content, as a man, 
you're just going to feel better. You're going to feel more confident. And you'll notice, that especially if your professional life had always been going relatively well, at least in your opinion, and your personal life was kind of mediocre or never what it, you wanted it to be. And then, obviously, after having read the book and implementing the things that you learn in it, your life gets better and you find yourself dating and in a relationship with a woman that knocks your fucking socks off, it really magnifies everything else in your life that you're kind of mediocre at. It's like when one area of your life does really exceptionally well, it really is a a magnifying glass to every other area of your life that's not going so great. And so when you're happy and you're in a relationship, you got a good woman in your life, as a man, you expand more. You want to become more. You feel more inclined to work out. You feel more inclined to take care of yourself. You feel more inclined to take risks. You feel more inclined to go and get that big client that you've always hoping to get into your business or your client roster. And you just feel better. You want more. You stretch more. Remember, masculine energy is purpose, drive, mission, succeeding, accomplishing, breaking through barriers and that's what's great about a good woman that she just naturally by being a part of your life you're going to feel more confident and you're going to want more there's always another level that we can evolve to there's always another challenge that we can take on and so obviously even this guy 45 year old virgin gets with a woman let's get a little panani here he's pretty excited he's feeling good starts stretching out beyond his comfort zone a little bit and growing He says, I smartened myself up, I worked out, I felt good, but something was bugging me. Inside, I was in turmoil. Adultery is a serious thing in the religion. Even though I was trying to push away my upbringing, it was always there. I asked if she would divorce so we could move on. I explained everything about my turmoil. She seemed to be understanding. But the divorce was never at the right time for her for over a year or so of us dating and i've heard i can't count the number of times that i'm talking to men and women and they're in situations with people like this that are married and unhappy and they're supposedly separated or they're going to leave their significant other but they never do and it's because you made the mistake of getting involved with a married woman because if she was really unhappy she would have left but instead her strategy to fulfill her needs is to give you a sad story about her unhappy marriage, give you the impression that she's maybe going to leave her husband, and then that way you give her what she wants, which is basically the sex and the romance and the companionship that she's not getting from her husband. And it's never the right time. Always something has to happen before they get around to it. The reality is if, you're, if your outcome for your personal life is an exclusive monogamous relationship, you don't date and get married, get involved with married people or people that are supposedly in the process of leaving their significant other. Because men and women who are in relationships and then start other relationships outside of the relationship they're in, that's the hallmark of somebody that's insecure, selfish, narcissistic, and really doesn't value loyalty, communication, and commitment. And I just, I've seen this so many fucking times, thousands and thousands of times over the years. Men and women both think that it's going to be a great relationship once they leave that other person, but they're ignoring the fact that they're the other man or they are the other woman that's facilitating this person getting their needs met in an albeit very dysfunctional way, but yet they never do anything to end the supposedly bad marriage or bad relationship that they really want to get out of. You look at what people do, not what they say. She said she was unhappy, and it really doesn't matter if she is or isn't or she was lying to you because the reality is if you look at her actions, she's still married to this guy. So if you want an exclusive, loyal, monogamous relationship, it's just delusional to think that you're going to be able to rip off some other dude's wife and she's going to magically be faithful to you one day. These are the kinds of things where you got to exercise some emotional self-control and just simply not get involved. However, for this particular guy, he lost his virginity. That was good for his confidence. Even though he's struggling with what it means in his religion, bottom line is he expanded a part of himself, expanded a part of his personality and his anatomy 
She was gutted. I hurt her deeply. We parted ways, but she remains married six months on and is dating, started dating other fellows again. Big shock there. I felt a kind of grief at losing her like nothing I have ever felt. Well, the thing you understand is she was never yours. You were just the guy she was fucking outside of her marriage. That's reality. Even though we were from two different backgrounds with different morals and values, she lied to me several times over things I consider serious. She's a liar too. I'm shocked, shocked, I tell you. She doesn't value loyalty. She doesn't value honesty. So this is no surprise at all. She lies to her husband. She lies to you and obviously the other guys that she's involved with. He says, I'm not perfect, but I value honesty immensely. Well, from that perspective, your values don't align anyway. So a relationship ain't good. The kind of relationship you want, this woman just doesn't have the values to support that. She's not compatible from that perspective. Looking back, I know we were not right for each other, but she was my first love and I can't help but still want her. I'm sure you do, but the reality is that she'll never be faithful to you. This is how she behaves when her needs aren't getting met. She just goes and fucks somebody else and feels no remorse for it. We were so alike in many ways too, both a bit old-fashioned. I've been in a dark place since we split, which gets stirred up each time I visit places we were together. The reality is you have to see reality as it is. Not better than it is or worse than it is, but simply as it is. And you tended in this particular case to see reality as better than it was. You ignored the fact that you were having an affair with a married woman who's a liar and a cheater. And there's no way she could have the kind of relationship that you say or that you give me the impression that you're looking for. I know I should get out there and meet new women, but within the religion, it's a lot harder than in the hedonistic world. Well, at the reality, you're you're still a fucking hedon because you're you're committing adultery in your religion. So if I look at your actions and that tells me, yeah, you probably don't really jive with your religion. You're just doing it to please and make everybody else happy that is in your religion as well. And you got to ask yourself, is at 46 years old now, are you happy living this way? Is this fulfilling your needs? I mean, the reality is you got to get some experience. I mean, waiting till your wedding night to have sex with somebody what if they don't like sex what if sex is painful what if she's not very good at sex and never gets good at sex do you really want to stay in a marriage with somebody like that that's unfulfilling because i've gotten plenty of emails over the years from guys that are in that situation it's like we test drive cars and that's what dating is it's test driving a person to see if you want to put a ring on it or buy the relationship for life if you will He says, I'm at a point where I'm happier myself with less turmoil, but deeply unhappy at having lost someone I foolishly thought could be the one. Yeah, that's just kind of a scarcity mindset. Like she's the only one out there. I mean, she's a cheater and a liar. There's no way she could ever be the one. She's not loyal to, to anyone other than herself and what she wants in the moment. Did I say I was naive? But you didn't have to. Some days are very dark and I obsess. Others are a little better. I feel as though I will never get over her. With time, you will, dude. See, this is another thing, but by not dating and being involved with women, it's like you're 45, 46 years old, and now it sounds like you're experiencing heartbreak for the very first time. That's why it's much better to do these kinds of things when you're younger. So you learn, you get burned, and you recognize, I'm probably not going to touch that hot stove again. I want her back, but know that I can't have her. Well, she was never yours to begin with, dude. He says, we still message. Well, if you want to be, if you want to have a healthy, happy, monogamous relationship, you don't message and you don't get involved with women who are cheating on their significant others. Just tell her that, hey, I'd love to chat, but only after you're divorced and you leave your husband because it's not, it's not appropriate. I'm not going to be involved. And stick to that. Because that's the kind of thing that if you've got the balls to say no until she's divorced, that it may be enough to cause her, if she likes you enough, to actually leave and do something about it. But when you continue to talk to her and stay involved with somebody, you're enabling their behavior. It's like, what are the consequences? You're going to stick around anyways, even though they're cheating. So why should they end their relationship? 
You're giving them what they want with no consequences. My heart leaps when she contacts me. I try no contact, but don't know my goals in this. Well, your goal should be to find a woman who will be loyal and faithful to you and who believes in it. And obviously being involved with a woman like this is just simply going to get in the way of you attracting somebody into your life because you need a woman who's ready, willing, able, and open to having a relationship. And she's none of the above. She's just looking to fuck around on her husband and be with a guy that'll put up with the fact that she's married and goes home to some other guy at the end of the night. My mind says I can't be with her and be totally happy, but my heart disagrees. Well, rejection tends to breed obsession and you gotta see reality for what it is. I know if another woman showed me any interest, it would help, but at this time, it's unlikely. Well, it's unlikely as long as you keep staying involved with this girl. That's why you have to force yourself to get out there and meet and interact with other women and other human beings and focus yourself on creating a great life and lifestyle that's fun, that's enjoyable, that's full of social activities that you love and enjoy. Because it's in the process of living and enjoying your life, that's when you meet somebody unexpectedly as they say, when you're not looking for it. You're having so much fun living your life that it just kind of fucking happens. But at the end of the day, you have to make the effort. Even if it's getting on a few dating apps just so you can be in the process and seeing some prospects and having matches and, and messaging with the matches. You've got to do something positive that communicates to the universe you're trying to find somebody. You want to find somebody. You're putting in the effort. And if you're doing a lot of online dating, the person you end up with, you might not even meet online. You might meet them in person. But the very fact, the nature that you are involved in, say, online dating or you are involved in going out and doing social things, hoping to meet somebody when you're out, communicates that you're ready, willing, able, and open to it. You attract how you act. And if you're acting like you're serious about meeting somebody and you're getting phone numbers, you're approaching women in person, you're interacting with other human beings, maybe you're doing online dating, maybe you're not. The point being is you're doing activities that enable you to meet women that you wouldn't normally meet. You attract how you act. So if you're acting as if you want to meet somebody, eventually you will. But if you're doing nothing, if you're sitting around and you're sulking over this, the vibe you're putting out into the universe is that you're okay being completely single and having nothing going on in your personal life, which just reinforces more of doing nothing. Again, you attract how you act. If you want a great, happy, healthy relationship, act like a guy who is making an effort to find somebody. Take some positive action towards that whenever you have the opportunity. And if you haven't, again, if you haven't read my book, 3% Man, you can go to my website, understandingrelationships.com, subscribe to the email newsletter on my website, and you can actually read it for free. And if, you'd if you're in a weird situation like this, or you're not sure about somebody that you've been dating or seeing, if they're a good quality prospect and you want my opinion before maybe you get a little too far down the line, or you're already pretty far down the line and you want to decide whether or not it's a good thing to stay in, Go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen and you can book a coaching session with yours truly so I can help you analyze the situation and see it more clearly without being blinded by our emotions. Because remember, we make decisions based on our emotions and we use logic and reason to justify those decisions. And you can see in this particular guy's case, he's focusing more on his emotions and kind of ignoring the reality of his situations. And remember, we can ignore reality, but we can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. And until next time, I will talk to you soon. Hey.